Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Wallace. How are you? I hope all is well. Uh, the um, assembly was awesome. It was totally fantastic. Just wanted to do this short video just to remind you a little bit about Monopoly before I see you in class tomorrow. It's been a few days and uh, certainly, you know, Monopoly is still kind of new for us. So want to just keep us on track. Um, so this is a question, a free response question that is from the AP College Board. Assume that Clark Electronics has a monopoly in the production and sale of a new device for detecting and destroying a computer virus. Clark Electronics currently incurs short-term losses but continues to operate. Um, and this second part of the question should give us some clues as to what types of questions the College Board will ask because they're telling us this is a firm that is continuing to operate so it's not shutting down. Um, so we know some things about that and it's also a firm that's making a loss okay and that helps us uh, be able to understand you know what kind of um, status Clark Electronics is in. The very first part of this question what must be true for Clark to continue to operate in the short run? Uh, the same uh, shutdown rule applies in Monopoly as it does in perfect competition so in order to be producing Clark has to have a price that is greater than or equal to minimum AVC. It's not any different than in perfect competition. If the price were to fall below minimum AVC, then Clark in the short run should shut down. Uh, he will produce, you know, even with a loss, as long as price is greater than minimum AVC, at that price, um, Clark is able to cover some, uh, his variable costs and some of his fixed costs, or at least all of his variable costs, if the price is exactly equal equal to minimum AVC. Draw a correctly labeled graph and show each of the following for Clark. So we're looking to do profit maximizing price and quantity. Um, that's always going to be where MR is equal to MC. Okay, so that's not so new for us, but this is known as the profit maximizing rule. And we also have to showcase the area of loss for Clark's. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to graph uh, the monopolist. Remember, it's not side by side graphing. We're looking at just a single firm, and this is, you know, Clark. Okay, this is the firm uh, that Clark's Electronics. We have a downward sloping uh, demand curve. That's something uh, that a monopolist is always going to have in order to sell more. The monopolist has to lower a price. Remember the demand curve is equal to the AR curve, average revenue curve, and essentially is also equal to price. This demand curve tells us what consumers are willing to pay for various quantities of the good. On the x-axis, we have quantity and price uh, and costs, uh, both on the y-axis. Uh, we also have a marginal revenue curve that is less than demand. This is something that we talked about already in class, why this is the case, because we have a downward sloping demand curve, we have a marginal revenue curve that's less than demand. Uh, we also are going to see some cost curves, so let's do our um, marginal uh, uh, cost curve. Here's our marginal cost curve, that typical uh, kind of candy cane shape. And even without putting ATC on here, I can start to do my first step. I'm looking at, you know, what is the profit maximizing uh, quantity, right? What is that going to be? Well, I want to find where MR is equal to MC, okay? And I'm going to note the quantity on the x-axis, this quantity that I have in the little square box, that's the only quantity that's profit maximizing, okay? Um, the price, don't, you know, fight the urge to uh, take this and make that the price, that's not correct. For a monopolist, the monopolist can use the demand curve, so the monopolist is going to find the highest price that the monopolist can charge, according to the demand curve, is the price at the quantity Q, okay? So the monopolist is producing quantity Q, not more, not less, uh, but at that quantity, the highest price they can charge, that's the monopoly price, okay? So we've got the monopoly price. Um, we also now, um, in addition to having our profit maximizing price and our profit maximizing quantity, now we can start to look at, you know, shading the loss, okay? We know that this is a monopolist making a loss, uh, so we're going to put that on here. Because it's a monopolist making the loss, I know that my price is going to be less than ATC. That's a given. 
Uh, if I wanted to, I could put AVC on here and showcase my price being greater than AVC, but I'm not asked to graph that. I'm only asked to shade the loss, and for that, I only need two things. I need price, and I need to ATC, right? What's the difference between what the monopolist is going to sell the good for and what the monopolist has to pay on average for each unit, you know, of that good? So we're going to draw our ATC curve, something like that. Remember, minimum point of ATC is intersecting MC. And now in order to shade this loss at the quantity that is profit maximizing, that's the only quantity we're interested in, the price is this price, ATC at that quantity. I'm going to go all the way up to this point on my cost curve while my price is uh, here in that green box. My ATC is going to be a little bit greater on the y-axis. It's a dollar amount that's higher. My per unit loss I can kind of showcase right here. I could do that in a dollar amount in case I was interested in that, or I could shade this whole box, right? For every one of the quantities that's being produced, I have a per unit loss, and this is going to be my shaded box is equal to the loss, okay? So for the most part, we have our um, questions A and B uh, answered. If I go to this next question, assume Clark is maximizing his profit. What will happen to total revenue if Clark raises his price? And explain. Don't forget, uh, when you get an explain question, you have to offer a sentence or two about why the answer is the answer that you believe it is. So we know that Clark is maximizing his profit, okay? So he's producing where MR equals MC, okay? And I'm just gonna draw this in here uh, very, very, um, you know, without going back. Here's our demand curve. Here's our MR curve, okay? Now here's my MC curve and Clark is producing at that quantity and at that price, okay? What's gonna happen to total revenue? If Clark says, you know, forget it, I'm just gonna raise my price. It's gonna be somewhere like up here on the demand curve, okay? Well, I know that this is going to relate to elasticity because I'm being asked about total revenue and I can answer that question using the total revenue test and I can kind of assess what will happen to total revenue if I knew if this quantity is in the elastic or inelastic portion of my demand curve. Uh, I can tell, based on looking at this, okay, that Clark, if he's profit maximizing, and we're assuming he is, at this quantity right here, he is in the elastic portion of the demand curve. Um, the part of the demand curve, okay, let's say right here in the blue, okay, that part of the demand curve is actually elastic, okay? Why is it elastic? Because that portion of the demand curve has a positive marginal revenue curve, positive number. Even if marginal revenue is decreasing, it's a positive number, that is elastic. If I increase the price in the elastic range, by definition, I know that total revenue will decrease. It's elastic. Increase the price, a certain uh, percentage, you know, change in price. Um, but the quantity bump, the quantity effect is going to be uh, much greater, okay? So that would be elastic. If I raise the price and the quantity dropped, because we're talking about elasticity of demand, if I raise the price, quantity has to drop. That's the law of demand. If I raise the price and the quantity drops a lot, um, a lot more than the percentage change in price, I'm, I'm elastic my total revenue is going to decrease. My quantity effect is much bigger than my price. My price increase isn't big enough to kind of capture more revenue because my quantity um, drop is so significant. Uh, so that is, as long as I know it's elastic, I can explain using a statement because Clark is in the elastic range of the demand curve, an increase in price would lead to a decrease in total revenue, spot on, okay? Uh, the very last one, if demand for new devices increases, what will happen to each in the following in the short run, okay? Uh, and so let's kind of highlight what happens when the demand curve shifts. In this case, we've got a demand curve, we've got an MR curve, and we're just gonna kind of put on here um, our MC curve, okay? One of the questions is about the profit maximizing quantity. So this is the initial profit maximizing quantity. This is the initial price, okay, in case we're interested in that. What happens when the demand curve shifts? When the demand curve shifts, the demand curve shifts to the right, okay? 
kind of a shift like we've done in past. Just because this is a monopoly, it's not going to be any different. The one exception is that the marginal revenue curve is also going to shift uh, with demand. So the marginal revenue data is attached to the demand curve data. Demand curve shifts right. So let's call this demand two. Now we have a um, marginal uh, revenue curve that's uh, less than demand. Let's call it marginal revenue two. Okay, and this looks a little uh, wacky in the way I drew the shift, but in um, a sense, we kind of get the uh, idea. One question was what happens to the profit max uh, quantity? What happens to that when the demand curve shifts? And this should make sense, right? The monopolist seeing a demand increase, marginal revenue also increases, right? So we have a new profit maximizing quantity where marginal revenue is equal to um, marginal cost. And we see that Q2 is greater than Q1. So the profit maximized uh, quantity um, has increased, okay? So that would be the answer uh, to that one question. The second question has to do with what's happening to total costs, okay? And this relates to the ATC curve. Before we had an ATC curve that looks something, you know, like this, okay? Sorry, my minimum point is a little messed up there, but um, it looks something like this. My ATC curve, I, the points along the curve that are ATC, ATC at various quantities, that can increase or decrease. But the question here is about total costs. What's gonna happen to total costs when my demand curve uh, increases and my marginal revenue curve increases? My total costs will increase. Why is that the case? Uh, because my quantity has increased, okay? I will have greater total costs because my quantity has increased. And if you remember what a um, total cost curve <laughs> looks like, it is very upward sloping an increase in quantity will lead to an increase in total costs, okay? I uh, hope that helps. I'll see you in class.